Hi everyone. Today we're speaking about emailing professors and teachers. With so many institutions turning to online education, this topic is way more important than ever before. Our guest today is Professor Vicki Lavendahl. She's an associate instructor at the University of Central Florida's Rosen College of Hospitality Management. Professor Lavendahl specializes in human resources and communication, so she's perfect for this video. Professor Lavendahl, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today from the beautiful Rosen College of Hospitality Management at the University of Central Florida. Well, let's get started with the introduction portion of the email. How should students start off their emails to professors or teachers? Say it's a new instructor who they might not know yet. Should they stick to the formal dear? Is hello or hi okay? Where's the line there? Great question. And actually, when I think of it, I don't write students and I don't say dear Tom and Sally. So I don't ever expect a deer. I sometimes get a deer, but I'm perfectly fine either way. It can be hello, Professor Lavender. I do expect some sort of a greeting. So it says, so I'm happy if it's just Professor Lavendahl, just like I would just write a student with their name. Professor Lavendahl is fine, deer, doesn't matter one way or the other. Again, these are my perspectives as a faculty member, and I'm sure other faculty may have different ones but I'm happy to share from my perspective as a communications professor, what might be helpful. Great, so say your professor is, has a PhD, should introducing yourself to that professor, should you use a doctor beforehand or is it best to just kind of stay with professor? Oh no, doctor always. They have invested, anybody who has earned a doctor's degree deserves the respect to be honored and respected with that every single time. So it's always going to be doctor and her last name, always doctor and her last name, never miss. Professor, I don't think is objectionable to anyone. And again, in our conversation, I would be Professor Lundell because I have not earned a doctorate, but I would absolutely address anyone who has earned a doctorate as doctor. Okay, great. So now kind of moving on to the body of the email. How should students start off the body of the emails? Is it best to start with a, some people refer to them as like a meaningless nicety, which would just be, I hope all is well, or I hope you had a great weekend, something like that. Or should students kind of get straight to the point and, yeah. Again, my perspective, either one is fine. Sometimes that's based on how much time you have, right? The timing of the message and the content of the message as well. Typically, uh, when I'm interacting with students, we're dealing with whatever their question about the course is or the assignment or things like that. So usually we just go to that. I do think somewhere in the message there is a cordial, either thank you or have a nice day or good afternoon or good morning or a greeting like that is fine and welcome, but not necessary to comment on, did you see the game this weekend or did you notice how sunny it was at the beach? Not, not necessary. If there's been a circumstance where the student was ill, then I might say, I hope that you're feeling better by now at some point in the message. So I hope that clarifies. It's not a negative in any way, but nor is it expected to have anything other than the purpose of the communication. So this is sticking in the body of email. I know a lot of students are meeting their professors or teachers for the first time online, particularly this semester. And that can be kind of awkward placement You, when you say, hi, my name is. So do you have any tips on how students should let their professors or teachers know who they are? Should they state their name up front like I just did or not mention their name until the sign off at the very end of the email? Another great question. It's not bad to have it there, but there's no purpose to have it there. So think of it if you are introducing yourself professionally to an employer and it's coming on your email. So there's no reason to say my name is because your name is in the email, your name is in the subject, your name should be in the signature. So there's no reason for a line that says my name is because it's clear that that letter is coming from a person. It's clear that person has a name and you will tell us what your name is by your email address and your signature. So there's no reason to say hello, my name is. Now, many times in online courses, like you talked about, we have now, there will be a welcome discussion 
that the professor sets up for people to come in and say hello or share a photo or tell us what you did this summer or something like that. And those are a little more uh, casual and less intimidating and a nice way to introduce yourself. Uh, last comment I'll make on this is at UCF, we have web courses, which if you message me from your course, I get the added benefit of knowing that you're in my Tuesday communications class rather than my Thursday communications class. So whenever you can message within whatever the technology tool is, I think that's a helpful way for student for our professors just to know until they get to know you which class you're in, which section and all that. Okay, great. So also about the body of the email, the content is kind of what I would like to speak about now. Is it best to kind of be brief and just introduce the idea of your email there, or should you add a lot of detail and explanation, lay it all out in the email? Great question. So I think the goal is to have a meaningful conversation, and the goal is to minimize back and forth. So I would say, rather than saying, I'd like to meet with you sometime, <laughs> put in, I'd like to meet with you during your office hours Tuesday are you available at 2 p.m. or something like that. So I would be as specific as you could be because the beauty of email and the challenge of email is that we can react, we can respond at whatever schedule we're on. So even if we're not on different schedules and that's fine, we can get each other's messages. But you also want to minimize the lag between if I'm in four hours of classes or you're at eight hours at work, you just want to be as clear. So I would say you put in as much detail as you need to meet your goals and objectives of the conversation of the exchange so that you can minimize as much as possible back and forth. And there may be some back and forth and I would be remiss if I didn't insert here, I hope you don't mind that email is not the best tool for every single conversation of all time. So sometimes it may be that we say, you know what, sounds like this is a little more complicated and maybe we should schedule a call or a Zoom or a chat, or maybe we could manage this some other way to make sure that we get all your questions answered or that you get what you need from the conversation. So I now have to ask, are there any big do nots? There are there certain phrases, words, or maybe styles of writing that students should absolutely avoid when emailing their professors or teachers? Yeah, I think you don't want the casualness that students sometimes use with, with friends. For instance, I have gotten, I, I, I messaged a student one time and got back a, oh, I didn't know what day it was. And they just went into questions about the comment. Well, that, you had, with no greeting, with no acknowledgement, with no signature close, with none of that. I also have gotten emails with sentences in all capital letters when a student was upset about something or another. So if you're upset, think about it for a moment. And we've all done that, right? We've all had times when we've been upset and we've responded maybe before we really thought through our response. And this has happened to me and I've had to go back and say, I apologize that response was not as gracious as it should have been. I was trying to be brief or I tried to get back with you quickly and I apologize for that. So again, it's okay for us to make mistakes in our communications with them. It's also okay to say, I'm sorry, and I apologize for that. And I've had that happen with students both ways as well. So again, the thing is not to be so casual, like you were talking to anyone else. I do think there should be enough respect with usually, as we talked before, a greeting, the comments, and a signature close. And thank you for your time. Great. So kind of just Building off of that very last sentence you said there, what are the most appropriate sign-offs? Is it best? Thanks. Thank you for your time. Are there any things that you should use? Maybe some things that you should avoid? Most often, because most often in our professional exchanges, we are asking for information. We are asking for clarification. So I think most often when we've had a conversation with another, we do close it with thank you because we're thanking them for their time. We're thanking them for the information. We're thanking them for responding. I think thank you is 100% golden all the time. I think you cannot go wrong with thank you. Some people prefer best or best wishes and that's perfectly fine. But I would say if, if you need to say thank you for what's happened, if I need to, or if you need to, then thank you may be a part of that. Anything else? I don't think I've seen anything inappropriate 
in terms of that. I've seen a lot of no clothes and no greeting and just the what's going on with this class or what's going on with this final or, or this assignment didn't make sense to me. So again, I think it's, it's part of the package. Okay, so kind of to wrap things up here, just a couple more questions. Let's talk about follow-up emails. Mm -hmm. If a professor or teacher doesn't respond within a certain time and, you, and the student needs an answer to a question, is it appropriate for that student to follow up? And if so, how long should they wait? And do you have any advice on how they should go about constructing the follow-up email? Great question, great question. So whenever there's a timeline involved, you want to express that. So whether it's somebody writing for a letter of recommendation and they say, would you write a letter of recommendation? One of my follow-up questions is always gonna be, when do you need it? And so the more we can be thoughtful about what am I asking for and when, do I, when am I looking for a response is helpful. Some professors say I'll respond on emails within so many hours or so many days or within a week. So everybody has their own. I don't establish that. I try to get back as soon as I can. Sometimes things happen that keep us from that. And once in a while, things do get lost or never sent that we thought we sent. All those things happen. So to follow up to say appropriate, I, I had messaged you on Tuesday and this is the next Monday and I just was hoping for clarification before I see you in class on Tuesday. Something like that is fine. You never want to be disrespectful about that. And it's fine to say, I'm not sure if you received my message, but I was hoping to clarify this before our class tomorrow, something like that. So you can add something like that in there if that is helpful. But I think a good best practice to avoid that is to beforehand say, here's what I'm looking for in this. Now, realistically, if it's 20 minutes before our class, I may be in another class for the four hours before that. If it's my teaching day, I may be in class all day. So try to think about it's not just your schedule but it's also that of someone else and somebody who is teaching a class does not have access to respond especially in the last 15 minutes before the class starts okay great so lastly what is an appropriate time frame for students to send their emails whether they should or not students often do end up spending all night awake, maybe they're doing homework assignments, et cetera, and they think they can send an email at say 3 a.m. because the professor won't get in until the morning anyway. Is that okay or is it always best to kind of wait for that maybe nine to five uh, window? I don't have a problem with that. And again, maybe some professors established these are the times that I'll check and respond to emails. And that's one of the beauties of email, right? Is that I can send it at my convenience and at your convenience, you'll get it. So I don't have a concern with that unless it was 3 a.m. and I need a response now, that may not be practicable. So I don't think that when it's sent, and we all have our email that goes with us everywhere now, and some people carry and check it throughout the day, and others have dedicated times for it. So I don't think that's fine. And I also think it's fine to say, I'm sending this now because I just got off work, and I know that I probably won't hear from you until the next day. That, that's fine too. So again, to be clear about what your expectations are and timelines, and I think that helps everybody. Great, well, that does it for us here today. Thanks again, Dr. Lavendel, for taking the time to talk with us. It was my pleasure. I hope this is helpful. Bottom line, think like a professional. Part of the college experience is preparing you to be successful professionals in whatever your chosen field, and communication's a really important part of that. So if you think, how do I make sure I'm professional now, that will serve you well when you leave our campuses to become the professionals that we want you to be, so we can be proud of you. So thanks for the opportunity to share some thoughts. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more interviews like this, please subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.